Hey everyone, I'm John Bozek with Electric Bike Report, and in this review we're going to be talking about the Hemiway Cobra Pro. So we get to review plenty of fun and versatile fat tire e-bikes here at EBR, but the Cobra Pro's motor and its full suspension place it in a more specialized subcategory of all-terrain bikes. When you're out there dealing with loose and rocky ground, a lot of bumps and steep hills, you want something that first of all has the grip and the muscle to power through it, but also something that responds quickly and handles well in that kind of environment. You also don't want to run out of battery power out in the middle of nowhere, so having a substantial range is important too. Those are some demanding boxes to check, so with those things in mind, did the Cobra Pro live up to our expectations for an e-bike in the all-terrain category? Stick around to see what happened when we put this bike to the test. Before we get started, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. This helps support the channel and also makes it easier for you to see more of our content. We're always talking about awesome e-bikes and we'd love to help you find one that's right for you. You might be aware that we've already reviewed the standard version of the Cobra, so let's take a closer look at what stands out on the upgraded Pro model today. This isn't going to be a dedicated comparison video, but let's go over some of the biggest differences between the two bikes. First, where the standard Cobra has a 750 watt rear hub motor with a torque sensor, the Cobra Pro that we have here has a full 1000 watt mid-drive that also has a torque sensor. There are a few caveats with that that we'll talk about shortly, but this is a really good start for an e-bike that wants to be in off-road environments. The 1000 watts means that it has tons of power, and the fact that it's a mid-drive with a torque sensor means that it's going to deliver that power naturally and responsively where and when you need it. On top of that, this thing pumps out a ridiculous 160 newton meters of torque that really helps out on hills and loose ground. For perspective, this is around 50 to 100% more torque than we commonly see with e-bikes made for less demanding environments. We'll talk about our hill test results soon, but again, things are looking pretty good here already. Uh, the other big difference between the base model of the Cobra and the Cobra Pro is their gearing. The standard Cobra uses a 7-speed 14-28T mixed Shimano system with a turny derailleur and an Altus shifter, while the Cobra Pro has a 10-speed 11-34T Shimano Diore system that gives it a wider gearing range and more flexibility to match your environment. That gearing range, the powerful motor, and the combination of the bike's 26 by 4.8 inch tires and its full suspension come together to give the Cobra Pro the elements it needs to handle those tougher environments. The bike's motor plays a big role in its range cap capability too. Uh, the Cobra Pro has an absolutely gigantic 48 volt 960 watt hour battery that powers that hungry 1000 watt motor. The fact that the motor is a mid-drive means that it's able to split some of the work naturally with the rider, making it more efficient than a rear hub motor, and uh, slowing down that battery consumption rate. This is, allows the bike to go a pretty significant distance on a single charge, which we'll talk about in our range test section shortly. Let's dive into the Cobra Pro's full list of specs, and then we'll get into its test results a bit later. We already talked quite a bit about the power and the benefits of the Cobra Pro's 1000 watt Buffung mid-drive motor, but I do want to talk up front about one important aspect of that that we haven't covered yet. E-bikes are typically separated into three classes, which in many cases determine where they can be legally ridden. That three-class system places a cap on motor wattage at 750 watts, which you might remember is the nominal output rating of the standard Cobra's motor. We always recommend that you check your local laws, but the fact that the Cobra Pro has a 1000 watt motor means that it falls outside of that three-class system, and in many locations it will only be legal for off-road use. This is where the Cobra Pro is meant to be used, so it makes sense, but it is something to be aware of ahead of time. Moving on from the motor and the drivetrain that we've already covered, let's look at the bike's rear suspension. Hemiway's website doesn't spec a brand or model of rear shock, but the one on our test bike here is a DNM AO38. 
I didn't make any adjustments to it during my time on the bike, but right out of the box, I'll say that it felt a bit stiff on paved surfaces, although it did feel a lot better on dirt. Overall, it performed pretty well for us, but it is on the budget end of the spectrum. So if you're planning to use the Cobra Pro in more extreme situations, you might want to consider upgrading this with something like a RockShox Monarch. The bike has a cushy Sail Royal saddle, which I thought was pretty comfortable even after hours on the bike. Considering that it has that rear suspension, we did expect to see something a little more performance oriented, but again, no real complaints here. Uh, now let's talk a little bit more in depth about that 960 watt hour battery that's fully integrated into the bike's down tube. Hemiway's website specified some quote unquote new technology used here in the battery's LG or Samsung, Samsung cells, and we wanted to get the scoop on that. Hemiway told us that the cells used in this battery are larger in size and milliamp capacity, but they also have a different and proprietary chemical composition that gives them greater energy density. Uh, from our understanding, this allows for a larger capacity in a smaller than usual battery, which is pretty cool. For brakes, the Cobra Pro uses Tektro hydraulic disc brakes on 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the back. We talked a bit about the bike's massive 26 inch by 4.8 CST tires. We rode around in dirt and sand with these, and they did a really great job of grabbing on and tearing through that loose ground. Toward the front end of the bike, we have the suspension fork, which doesn't show a brand, but it is an air and oil fork instead of a spring. Its travel is also unspecified, but it did fine for us, although again, it might be something to consider upgrading if you're dealing with more extreme environments regularly. Uh, I did really like to see the plastic shrouds at the base of the fork that help to protect it from dirt and debris. The bike has a nice extra wide headlight here with two LEDs that give a wider field of illumination than we typically see. It also has an automatic sensor that activates the light and also dims the bike's LCD display in low light conditions. I was surprised to see this as it's pretty uncommon, but I really liked it and I would love to see it more often. Looking at the cockpit now, the Cobra Pro keeps things pretty straightforward. We of course have the front and rear brake levers and ergonomic rubber grips. We found the grips to be a little hard, especially with some time on the bike, but they do have a good shape. The throttle lever is mounted on the left handlebar and that can be used to take you up to 20 miles an hour. We've also got the bike's control panel, which is a small thing, but one that I really liked. It puts the pedal assist buttons close to the grips, making PAS changes super quick and easy. On the right, we have a small bell that's always nice to have, although to me, it's a little funny to see when looking at the rest of this big, tough bike. Uh, we also have the Shimano Diore under the bar shifter, which in my opinion works great and also fits the bike really well. Finally, in the center, we have the uh, Bafung full color LCD display. I like this a lot too. I thought it was well organized and easy to read. I think that covers all the Cobra Pro's major components. So let's dive into the data we gathered in our testing and see how the bike actually performed. With the speeds at which e-bikes are capable of traveling, it is crucial that they have effective brakes. To test brake systems, we pedal every e-bike that we test up to 20 miles an hour and then hit the brakes to stop as quickly as we can while still maintaining control. We measure the distance it takes the bike to stop, then repeat the process two more times. This allows us to calculate an average stopping distance from those results. In the last section, we talked a little about the Cobra Pro's Tektro hydraulic disc brakes on 180 millimeter rotors. With these brakes and three sets of test data, we calculated an average stopping distance of 26 feet and one inch. This is actually quite a bit further than our current running average, even when just looking at specifically the all-terrain e-bikes that we've tested, we chalk up the Cobra Pro's performance in this test mostly to its weight. You can see how big the bike looks in front of me, so it makes sense that this weighs almost 90 pounds. This isn't uncommon to see in the world of e-bikes, but it is definitely towards the heavier end of the spectrum. And it does mean that those brakes have to work a little harder to slow the bike down once it's up to speed. For this reason, we'd really like to see Hemiway upgrade these to 204 millimeter rotors in the future. It's always better to be over spec than under spec when it comes to brakes and larger rotors would provide better modulation and heat disbursement for those tougher off-road conditions. 
For our circuit test, we pedal every e-bike that we test around a one mile loop made up of four right turns and a small 30 foot hill. We do this first with no assistance from the motor and then again in each pedal assist setting. This gives us an idea of the bike's motor engagement, its handling and its speeds at those different PAS settings. This test was relatively unusual with the Cobra Pro due to the fact that the bike has two modes, eco and sport modes, and then five PAS settings within each of those. To keep things moving, I'll talk about the feel of eco mode first and then describe how sport mode differs overall. But before we get there, we did our first lap without motor assistance to establish a baseline. I mentioned before about the Cobra Pro's weight, and you can definitely feel those 88 pounds when you're doing all the work. Although I have to say that it felt a bit easier here than with some other bikes I've tested. This is most likely because the placement of the mid-drive motor keeps the weight of the bike pretty balanced. You're not going to want to pedal the bike without help from the motor, but it is possible. You'll see in the data that we saw a six mile per hour increase in average speed in eco mode and PAS1. This is pretty uncommon, but it goes to show that the Cobra Pro is delivering quite a bit of power even at its lowest setting. That's going to come into play more later on, but for now, just know that it's something we really like to see, and it makes the bike very functional, even when it's not drawing a ton of battery power. I'd say that if you're dealing with a lot of moderate or large hills, you probably want to have the Cobra Pro in at least PAS3 in eco mode, as you won't get a ton of help in the lower settings. PAS4 and 5 are both fast and capable on flat ground, and of course give you plenty of power to move uphill quickly too. Stepping up through the pedal assist settings in eco mode, you can see a pretty even increase in power and speed as that PAS setting progresses. Again, this is something we like to see because it means that the settings are intuitive and that you're getting just the bump or drop in power you expect as you change settings. One thing that I noticed in eco mode is that the higher pedal assist settings could feel ever so slightly jerky, like the spurts of power put out by the motor were relatively short with each pedal stroke. To me, this felt more like what you'd sense on a non-electric bike, just amplified. When I kick things up into sport mode, the ride became smoother and more consistent, as though those bursts of power sort of lengthened out. There was also an increase in power that we saw reflected in the average speed data in the circuit test, although both of these changes were pretty subtle in feel. The most obvious difference between the two modes was on hills. Pedaling uphill in sport mode felt much faster and easier. So our biggest takeaway from the circuit test was that the Cobra Pro's ride is seriously customizable. With 10 gears, two modes, and five PAS settings in each mode, you can really tailor the power and speed of the bike to your environment and your personal preferences. On top of that, this test really highlighted the natural and responsive feel of the bike's mid-drive motor that makes it easy to use and also a lot of fun to ride. Our range test is actually two separate trials where we pedal the bike until its battery runs out. The first test is done in the lowest pedal assist setting that provides constant input from the motor, and the second is done with maximum assistance. For each test, we measure the distance the bike was able to travel, and we compare that to the range advertised by the bike's manufacturer. We were happy to learn that Hemiway performs their own range testing similarly to the way we perform ours, and with the Cobra Pro, they claim a range, uh, maximum range of 60 to 80 miles. For our test, we set the bike to the two extreme ends of its settings, those being eco mode in PAS1 and sport mode in PAS5. To meet the speed limits of the local multi-use paths where we perform these tests, we also reduce the maximum speed of the bike to 20 miles per hour through its display menu. With these limitations and in maximum assistance, the Cobra Pro went around 42 and a half miles and with the minimum amount of assistance, we pedaled for a pretty substantial 64.2 miles. Overall, we were pretty impressed by that capability, but we did encounter one aspect of the bike that interfered with our testing just a little bit. When doing our max assist test in sport mode and PAS5, we went about 21 miles and got through around 75% of the battery when the motor's overheat protection feature kicked in. This is a safety feature that prevents damage to the motor by limiting its torque output until the motor cools down again. 
We were actually not aware of this feature until we ended the test and reached out to Hemiway to see what had happened. So we finished the range, range test while the motor output was limited, which probably stretched out our results quite a bit. So this feature is great for the longevity of the motor and the bike as a whole, even if it did surprise us. It does highlight an aspect of the bike that a long-term rider should be aware of. That is that the Cobra Pro seems to really encourage you to make use of its full range of settings. That might sound like a no-brainer, but with many e-bikes, it's easy to pop them in PAS4 and just cruise. In our experience, the Cobra Pro is very functional in sand and dirt in its low and mid-level PAS settings, so it's probably best to stick within that range and only bump things up to PAS5 when you're in a situation where you really need all the bike's power. This will help to keep that motor from overheating so you can keep having fun. To test every bike's hill climbing ability, we take them to a local hill called Hellhole, which is a steep but paved path that's a third of a mile long with an average grade of 12%. This is a pretty serious challenge for most e-bikes and some don't make it all the way to the top. We do this test both in the max pedal assist setting and with just the throttle to see if a bike has what it takes to make the climb. This test is really where the torque and power of the Cobra Pro came to the forefront. With only its throttle, that 1000 watt motor sprinted to the top in just one minute and one second with an average speed of 17.8 miles per hour. In sport mode and PAS5, we pedaled up in one minute and two seconds with an average speed of 17.5 miles per hour. With both tests, these results are crazy fast and prove to us that the Cobra Pro can handle even some extreme uphill climbs without really breaking a sweat. In fact, at this time, we've only tested two other e-bikes that have exceeded the Cobra Pro's performance, and even then just by a few seconds. All that power does seem to come at a little bit of a cost though. We noticed on this bike, as well as some other e-bikes with mid-drive motors that we've tested recently, that the extreme amount of torque applied by their motors can cause some abnormally rapid wear with their cassettes, especially on the highest or smallest cog. We had to get a replacement cassette during our testing, but even that started to show some issues over time. Having quality components that are made for such extreme forces is a good start, and Hemiway does seem to have checked that box here. The Cobra Pro uses a KMC chain that is made specifically for mid-drive motors, and the Shimano Diore system uh, is known to be a workhorse. That said, as I mentioned, uh, it is something that we've seen happen with other mid-drives. Hemiway ad advised us that their engineers are looking into the problem and trying to find a better solution. This highlights the need for some extra care when using such a powerful bike. It's a good idea to develop or redevelop some basic good practice habits to reduce the likelihood of problems. First, don't shift when the drivetrain is under load. When dealing with hills, this means anticipating the gear you'll need to be in ahead of time and then sticking with it. Next, downshift when you're coming to a stop and reduce your pedal assist setting when you're starting back up again so that the motor's maximum effort isn't applied right away. It's easy to get a bit lazy and forget these things on an e-bike. Even we are sometimes guilty of that, but it's important to stay sharp for the reason that we see here. We've covered a lot in this review of the Cobra Pro, most importantly, the capability and efficiency demonstrated by its motor and battery, as well as the versatility of its gearing and pedal assist system. This bike oozes power, as we've seen. It's responsive, it's specced well for its price, and it can go the distance in the right conditions. I mentioned this in my written review, but when you're riding it, it also feels like a tank. With those things in mind, I think we can safely say that this bike is a solid choice for anyone looking for a huge, heavy machine that can handle just about anything you want to throw at it. It's fast, it's fun, it's comfortable to ride, and it fits the bill for an affordable e-bike designed for off-road performance. We'd love to see an upgrade to uh, 204 millimeter brake rotors on the Cobra Pro in the future. The bike takes off great, but considering its motor's power and the bike's overall weight, we think it would really benefit from some additional help in slowing down more responsibly. We'd also appreciate seeing a solution to the cassette issues caused by the mid-drive motor's torque, but again, this isn't a problem with the Cobra Pro specifically, and adopting some good riding habits can help to prevent it. 
all in all, this is a seriously awesome bike that all of our reviewers really enjoyed riding. If you want to have the ability to play around confidently in areas that most other e-bikes can't handle, if you're a hunter looking for a great mode of transport to and from your favorite spot, or if you're an explorer who wants to get out in the wilderness for some adventuring, this might just be the bike for you. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to read more about our experiences on the bike, please check out the link to our written review in the video description. You also find a link to Hemiway's website where you can check current pricing on the Cobra Pro and pick one up for yourself. Before we go, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help us to grow and share more content with the world. We'd love to hear from you in the comments section too. So let us know if you have any questions or if you think we left anything out. That's all for today. Again, I'm John with Electric Bike Report, and this is the Hemiway Cobra Pro.